Welcome back to the channel, boys and girls. We're doing something special today. A lot of you have asked for carp fishing through the ice, and today is the day that it's gonna happen. I found a spot while crappy fishing not long ago that was loaded with carp. It's just a small bay off of a river, and I've been feeding it now for about 10 days, so I'm gonna go over how to find my spots in the winter, what baits to use, how long to pre-feed for, and just in general, what kind of structure I'm looking for to find these fish. So, just got to the spot, gonna set up my tent. I pre-drilled my holes, like I said, the last few days while I've been baiting. And uh, every time I've checked with the camera over the last week and a half, the bait's gone every time. So, I'm hoping the fish are eating. Beautiful March day right now, we're getting down to the end, and uh, it's supposed to be plus five. So I'm gonna get the tent up. I'm only gonna actually fish two lines because you can fish three lines in Ontario for carp, but your rods have to be six feet apart. So I wanna spread my lines out a little bit more, so I'm actually gonna fish one rod in the tent and one rod outside, both on baited spots. I had another baited spot, but I won't run a rod there unless one rod isn't producing. Maybe I'll move it over, so. Let's jump into it. Let's catch a carp on the ice. Today is the day. I think it's gonna be a good day. Let's go. Tents up, let's get inside. Munch cola tiger nut, topped with a fake corn. Gonna throw that on a blowback rig. So we're just gonna slide that baby on there like that. Put a little stopper. So that baby is just gonna sit on bottom, lead with pack bait. Citrus blend, pop ups. So we're gonna run one pop up rig and one bottom bait rig. All right, so we are ready to go. Just got the rigs done up. I'm gonna run one pop-up rig on a two ounce pack bait lead. I got 20 pound fluoro, 30 pound mainline braid, frostbite Mr. Big rod. And then on this one, I think this will be a very fun rod if I end up catching fish on it. The frostbite running gun, that's upside down. Shimano Sienna. 2000 with a 30 pound braid again, 20 pound fluoro, and this one is the bottom bait tiger nut with a piece of fake corn on the top. I'm using pretty short hook links, probably like eight inches. I want it to be uh, close enough to the lead and the feed pile, but I also want it to not get tangled, so I'm not gonna hook it up in the ball. I want the stiffness of the rig to push that bait actually away. And uh, we are fishing. I'm gonna get some pack bait made up. I'm gonna get these on. I'm gonna use those buckets filled with slush, bank sticks, alarms, swingers, and there is the hole. We got the live scope there so we can see when the fish are here. And it's gonna be sick. We're gonna get them on live scope, feeding for sure. I got uh, one hole on the far side of my tent, a hole in my tent, and then I have a third hole on the other side that I've been feeding. So if one hole is not producing, I'll try to move those rods around, but it is go time. Let's make a mix and uh, let's get fishing. The good thing about it in the winter is you don't need a swinger because your line's tight right to the rig and the fish has nowhere to go. It's impossible to get a drop back. So we are just running alarms, Belcoms. All right, so we got our mix. We got our rod set up there. I actually put a little butt holder tied around on the butt with a loop that goes over the back of the rod because I'm worried that it just hits so hard that it flips right over and goes down. I have triple holes made so I can get the fish out. So we do not want that to happen. So I'm gonna free spool, pack bait, and the rig, like I said, I'm not gonna stick it in the ball. I wanna drop super slow and ensure that that rig pushes away. We got live scope set up right here so I can literally Watch my ball go down. Just turned it on, have not seen a fish yet. So we're gonna drop in. Touch down on bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up my rig and move it about five inches so that that rig tightens up and makes sure that it's away from the ball. Now we're gonna turn my drag all the way down as loose as that baby can go. 
making sure now that the line is tight all the way to the tip of the rod. We're gonna put the volume on like one, just like that. So we're fishing, rod one is in. I'm gonna take the rod outside that has the pop-up on it, put some bait on that one, bring you guys with me, show you guys that dropping in. So QB roll sequence, let's go. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Of charm for the carp. Okay, so both rods are set. We've got the one to our right and one in the tent. Um, I've actually seen some carp on live scope already, but I wanted to go over. My most frequent asked question about this topic is, what do I look for when I look for a, for a spot? Well, the number one thing I look for is fish. You can't set up in a spot that you would in the spring or the summer and feed and hope that the fish will come to you because carp winterize in very specific winter holes. And once you find these areas that the carp are passing, their winter months, um, these fish go back to those spots year after year. So once you find one spot, a very good tool for this is live scope or a flash or some kind of sonar device so that you can actually check and look for marks. It's not always going to be carp. A lot of times drum will winterize in spots, catfish will winterize in spots. So what I'm looking for most of the time is six to 10 feet of water off of a heavy current in an area that's got a very soft mud bottom. They're eating bugs, and mostly all naturals this time of year, and it's very hard to get them on anything else. But when you introduce feed to the area and feed for long enough, those fish will find that feed, maybe only pick up a couple pieces the first time, check that area again maybe a couple days later, pick up a couple more pieces. And by replenishing all the time the same holes, when I drill my hole the first time I feed, I mark it with a stick and I make sure to open up the exact same hole every time so that the fish get used to coming and checking that area. And I'm not feeding a lot, maybe two softball size method balls and a handful of boilies. And I'm feeding every two to three days for a 10 to 14 day period. So a bucket of method mix like I made today will last me a long time. I'll actually make all my balls, freeze them in the freezer. When I go, I'll just bring a Ziploc bag with like six balls in it. And like I said, put two balls in each hole and then a couple boilies throughout the spot. So mud bottom next to current. Once you find an area that has carp, they're gonna return there year after year. And uh, this is a new spot for me. So I'm hoping with the feeding that I've done and the fish that I've seen here, I actually found this spot, like I said, by accident fishing crappies, noticed the carp on live scope, and uh, there's like 50 of them in here and some big ones. So hoping today is the day and uh, fingers crossed that we'll get into a big one. Let's go. There's a carp right there. We've been seeing a bunch on live scope. That was one. Here's another one coming in right here. He's gonna go right over the rig. My rig's right at that zero line sitting there. He's over it right now. There's another one up high showing up right here. Oh, oh, the fish turned around, that was on bottom. He's coming back. It's right on the rig. There's carp all around, guys. We are getting one very soon. It's only 10 o'clock. They're all over it right now. They're all over it. There's literally a fish on the screen, on the feed right now. Right. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it, guys. He's got it. It's definitely not a liner. He's right on the screen right there, moving away with it. On the running gun. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, he's fighting. Oh, it's a nice one. It's a nice one. No net isn't always the easiest. Oh my goodness. Let's go. Okay, let's bring him out onto the mat. We got one, let's bring him outside. 
there we go first one of the day watched them come in on live scope ate the tiger nuts and cola from munch what a fish had them hooked perfect kind of side bottom of the jaw and that is one of hopefully many 11 30 now and we got carp number one baby oh, i'm so pumped yes let's go let's go okay let's get this guy back i got an outside hole we'll let him go and we'll get that rig back down there hopefully get another one see you later girl bye amazing super stoked on that one that fish came on the tiger nut tipped with the fake maze on a blowback rig Man, this run and gun fought that fish perfectly. Just a slow, steady run, just be -de 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 -de. picked it up. Really not much of a fight. I was kind of surprised. I really thought the fish was gonna fight a little bit more, but uh, it's warm out. Fish are starting to get active. It is noon now, and that is the first carp on the board for 2023. Let's go, let's get back in there. Might I, if I get another fish on the tiger net, we're gonna put both rods on tiger net, but let's see what happens. There we go, there we go. We got one. Number two, number two, it's coming at me. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh yeah, this is a better one I think. There's my leader. They're really not taking big runs. This one's strong though. We got one, strong one. I'm targeting it again, I see him. I see him. Oh, he didn't like that. Come on. Come on. Get your head in the hole. Get your head in the hole. We got him. Yes. Tiger nut. Getting the job done. We're gonna put that other rod on Tiger nut for sure. Uh, yes. Number two. Let's get this fish out on the mat and take a look at her. Fish number two of the day. What a beauty. Let's go, tiger nut again. You're gonna have to get that other rod on tiger nut. I was literally sitting on my phone, not even watching live stream. Rod just ripped off. We had a pack of fish on the feed for a while. It was only a matter of time. Fish was hooked perfectly, bottom jaw. We're gonna get her back. Let's go. Yes. Yes. All right, we're gonna get this beauty back. Very close to 20 pounder for sure. Awesome fish. <sighs> Try not to let them just go down the hole. Try to hold their head for a second and uh, make sure that the fish can regain his energy before taking off. She's ready. Bye girl. Let's go, number two.
day so far. The bait has been getting munched. I've been watching them on live scope. Kind of seems at the same time when fish are coming into the beam, half the fish feel that beam of the live scope want to turn around. Well, once or one or two fish commit and like get to the bait pile, it seems like all the fish wanted to come. Like I had times with like eight different fish. You could see like heads down, tails up, feeding on the spot. And uh, I got into my phone on TikTok, and before you know it, rod was away, tiger nut, fish number two, and uh, gave a lot better fight than that first fish. That first fish kind of gave up. Second fish gave us some really good runs. Rigged back up again, ready to go. New method ball on there. Sprinkle a little bit in, and hopefully, we'll have fish number three. Even if I don't get another fish, I'm super stoked with how my day went. First time fishing the spot, fish are on the spot, and uh, now I got a future spot for more ice fishing carp on the ice and fishing with the carp on the ice for through the ice with the carps. So, all in all, win, win, winning. Another pack bait ball going on. It's perfect consistency right now, and I have so much corn in it. And it doesn't have to be packed on hard because I'm not casting it. I'm just vertically dropping it straight down. So I like to loose pack it so it falls off almost right away. Make sure my blowback rig is good, seems good. We're gonna drop that baby back down the hole ever so slightly here. Boom. You can see touchdown on live scope, just hit bottom. Now like I said before, I'm in the far end of the hole and I got these triple holes. So I just pick up my ball Move it ahead about eight inches. You can see where it was stuck in the bottom a bit. Back up on the Delcom. I'm not using bait runners or quick drags or anything. Just my winter reels. Leaving a little bit of loose in that line and uh, turning that drag right down. Waiting for that run. Let's keep on keeping on. Ba ding, ba dang, let's go. Well, guys, fishing has slowed down dramatically and the wind has picked up a whole lot of a bunch. And wouldn't you know it? While it was warm all day long, I ran the heater, and I did not have enough propane for the day, so I ended up running out of propane. But I thought, what a better time to talk to all of you about this amazing soft shell coat that I've been wearing all winter long. As many of you know, I ran just my bibs on top of this soft shell coat throughout the winter months, minus 20, outside, walking out to the spot, sending up 20 tip-ups, a tent, can take about an hour and a half, and it gets cold and a big bulky cumbersome coat is not ideal for me. I like having mobility and I like having something a little bit lighter on as long as it's warm. And I always would combat that big heavy coat with layers before until I got this DBU heated coat. It's absolutely amazing. Double zipper, comes with this very small battery that actually just sits in its own pocket. It tells you the percentage of what's left on the battery, 95% if you didn't see that. And it's just a touch of a button and the heated coat is on. And in no time, the five heated pads, you got two on your chest, one on your back, one on each arm, heat up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So it does not take long, just with a sweater, a t-shirt and this, to get absolutely toasty warm. And another great feature about these coats, they are completely waterproof. So in the snow and in the rain and in all the garbage with the wind and everything, you're staying dry. Zips right up, super warm, tons of pockets, like I said, two pockets in one arm, pocket in this arm, hand pockets where your hands fall directly on the two front 12 volt heating pads and you get toasty warm in this. Probably my favorite piece of clothing that I've ever had for ice fishing, warmer than any other coat that I've ever worn. And it's got three different settings. It's got a red for high, blue for medium, and green for low, and super stylish. I wear this coat going out with the family, take the battery out so it's not too weighted down, and uh, go out on the town with it. So check them out guys, Debu Heated Coats. Absolutely amazing product. I was always on the fence about heated coats and heated apparel before thinking about the price and like how heavy they'd be. But honestly, this brand knocked it out of the park and I absolutely love this. Spring, summer, fall, anytime you get a cool night or a cool day, this baby has the right mode to keep your body at the right temperature to keep doing what you want to be doing. So go check them out guys. Really nice product. Any of you outdoor enthusiasts will probably love. And uh, yeah, dboo.com.
She's going. She's going. Let's get this in first. Yes. We got him. Bigger fish. Bigger fish. There she is. Oh, it's not that big. It's not that big. It's the smallest one, actually. Let's go. Got her. Amazing. Number three. Let's go. Smallest fish so far to date but really nice carp all the same man the tiger nut i was outside shooting b-roll and i could hear the delcom going when i was on the shore behind me and i ran back and we had the third one on tiger nuts and cola baby i have tiger nut on that other rod too but i don't know it just seems that all the fish seem to be on this little spot and my other rod's only about 40 feet away from me so third one of the day let's get her back Let's go. See you later, girl. Bye bye. Let's go. Yes. Yes. Slimy hands, slimy pants. Fish number three. Couldn't have asked for a better outcome. But the fish are definitely biting. They are all over the live scope. I've noticed with the fish that I'm catching, they're getting finicky, more and more finicky with the live scope. So I might actually take the live scope out eventually. And uh, after that second fish, I put a tiger nut on the outside rod. But this inside rod, man, and that run and gun from Frostbite is playing those fish perfectly. Being such a long rod, it has such a good bend to it and it keeps those fish pinned. Every one of my fish was hooked up perfectly bottom of the lip. And uh, yeah, it's, like I said, nothing to it, but at the same time, everything matters. Spot matters, making sure you're on those fish, making sure you're pre-feeding. Pre-feeding is 90% of your success, being able to get those fish actively feeding day after day on the exact same spot so fish aren't leaving the area, they're coming back and checking those areas because, like I said, in the winter they're not eating a lot. Very, very small amounts. This munch tiger nut. Jumbos in cola, they are absolutely getting the job done. These babies, last year in France, last year all year in Canada, and now on the ice, proven themselves again and again. And that's the third fish on the same tiger nut, so I'm gonna put this baby back down, more pack bait on that, we're gonna get another fish, let's go. The rig is back in place, and we already got a fish feeding on the spot. This is crazy. They're all over the place. He is right on it right now, literally. Seven feet down, right under the hole. Let's go. I wanna see that rod bend, baby. Come on. There seems to be still fish in the area. When I pan around with the live scope, I can see them like 10, 12 feet away. But it's almost like with the three fish that I caught that they've like deemed this area like unsafe because fish don't wanna be coming in as much to the area where I've caught the fish. But we'll see, we'll see what can happen. I've actually taken that tiger nut off the second rod outside because things got slow and I put the yellow munch citrus nut pop-up back on. So we're running a pop-up again and the tiger nut's still in here. And hopefully, hopefully fish come back in and we can get one more carp. Well, that is gonna wrap it up, boys and girls. All in all, great day. I ended up staying two hours longer than I wanted to. It's now six o'clock, and I was supposed to leave at four. But uh, it was good. We ended up landing three ice carp, 
and it was a little bit higher of an expectation than I initially thought that we would have to be honest um, but the fish do not want to seem to come back into the zone I'm still seeing them on live scope milling around like in the 12 to 15 feet away but it's like when they get too close to the bait pile now they just spook and leave so I'm gonna pack everything up and uh, I'm gonna maybe try jigging for some crappies before dark but I hope this helped all of you that have been asking me to do a carp on the ice video um, I know it's been a long time coming so I hope this was a bunch of information that everybody that watches that is interested in doing carp on the ice can now apply and hopefully get after it send me pics i'd love to see some ice carp from all of you guys and uh thanks for checking out this week's video don't forget go down below subscribe uh, like all that good stuff and in my last two nipissing videos got a big giveaway coming up for the 10k so if you want some of those goodies go and watch and uh see how you're eligible to get those prizes thanks again see you guys later